Hello again. Today I'm making a new version of one of my absolute best-selling small dioramas. Before we want you to tell us the art. We'll be slicing, printing, curing, painting and tinkering with many more materials. If you just got here, my name is Stephanie and I'm a professional diorama maker. I will share with you my favorite quick and dirty tricks to make your DIY life a bit easier. Let's actually do a quick round of research for this one. I would love to be able to actually make the hill look a bit like a temple base. In my older version, these were basically just two pieces of foam. But now that I have the Anycubic resin printer, I can go for a lot more detail. So something like this, or something like this. While editing this screen recording, I actually noticed that my older version of the diorama was shown in Google search results. Wow, nice. I totally missed that. I decided to go for a simple 3D model of a Mayan looking temple that'll match the one in these illustrations. For me, if a model needs editing before slicing, I usually use Prusa Slicer, even though it's originally software for FDM printers. So if you finish with whatever you wanted to do, there's an option to export your whole bed to STL. As you can see, I chopped up the Mayan temple and scaled my deep thought model to the right size. Everything is in loose pieces now. So let's drag the whole thing into Litchi, add a few supports and go right to printing. Okay, here we go. After wasting a breath or 12 on these horrible stickers, I think we're ready. Like in many of my dioramas, there is always a lot of painting involved. I also love to use a lot of these special effects stuff. One day, I'll make all of those myself. For bigger areas and first layers, I just use whatever paint I have available. For the resin prints, I do use somewhat higher qualities like this Chaos Black by Citadel. Second and third layers, I usually just paint by hand. And since I'm not a very patient woman, I want to introduce you to my hair dryer. Really, there's no shame in using something like this. Always use one that has settings for a cold-ish airflow, since most paints don't really like hot desert storms. So after painting the basics, I can start adding all kinds of ground textures and effects. In my experience, you don't really need any kind of master degree to make these super cool effects work. Like I said, of course the real diehards make all of this stuff themselves, which I will definitely do a future video on. But for now, these little jars by Vallejo and AK Interactive filled with special effects will do the job perfectly. If you're going to use metallic paints in your airbrush, be aware that most of these paints are not thinned. Use an airbrush thinner medium or flow medium, like this one by Vallejo. Otherwise, your airbrush will not be very happy with you. I'm using a bronze metallic by Army Painter and this awesome shade shifting paint by Vallejo for the finishing coat. After gluing this creature to its mount, I'm adding some last sand and grass flocking here and there to cover up the glue. I also dry brush the base with black powder to remove any shine. All my glass dome dioramas are limited edition. Each individual piece is serial numbered and signed. Check out the Nerd Guild webshop for this piece and many others. There's absolutely something for every budget. There she is, ready to calculate the answer to the universe, life and everything or whatever the line was. I can't really remember, but something like that. I hope you enjoyed this small build. I do way more in-depth videos on much bigger diorama projects. So if you'd like to check those out, please follow our channel. See you next time. Bye! Nerd Guild! Hiffle, yeah! Gonna save the hiffling day, yeah! Nerd Guild. Nerd Guild. Yeah!